don't believe everything you hear. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie narrators who lied to us. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're examining the film characters whose stories are related to the audience, either directly or by point of view, but which are either inaccurate, incomplete, or highly suspect. They don't necessarily have to be first-person narrators as per the unreliable narrator trope, but they should at least be the main characters we follow in the story. Because so many of the following entries will be dealing with twists and turns in the film's respective plot, there will be spoilers ahead. Number 10. Malcolm Crow, The Sixth Sense A child psychologist with a broken marriage. Happy anniversary. Dr. Malcolm Crow's newest patient is a boy named Cole who claims, I see dead people. Crow does not believe Cole at first, but his discovery that Vincent, a former patient of his, may have had the same ability, leads him to believe the troubled child and he encourages Cole to embrace his gift. It seems a happy ending is in sight. However, Crow eventually discovers that his marriage is not broken. His wife is grieving because he's dead. He's been a ghost the whole time. Sometimes it's not that the narrator is intentionally lying to us, but simply that they're unaware of the truth. I think I can go now. Just needed to do a couple things. Number 9. Edward Teddy Daniels, Shutter Island U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels and his partner Chuck are charged with investigating the disappearance of a patient from a mental hospital on the titular island. There appears to be a conspiracy to hide the truth from them. In addition, Daniels is haunted by the death of his wife and her killer, Andrew Latus, who may be in the asylum too. Everything about this place stinks of government ops. There is indeed a conspiracy at work, but not the one Daniels was expecting. He is Andrew Latus. He killed his wife, and the staff has been allowing him to play out his paranoid delusions in the hopes of snapping him out of them. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? Number 8. Fred Madison and Pete Dayton, Lost Highway Fred Madison is a saxophonist convicted of his wife's murder and sentenced to prison. However, while in prison, Fred inexplicably becomes Pete Dayton, a mechanic and someone completely different. Pete is let go and resumes his life, but is drawn into Fred's life when he begins having an affair with a woman who may or may not be Fred's wife in a different body. The pair swaps bodies again and sets in motion events that happened earlier. Is there time travel? Are one or both insane? And is there a point looking for concrete answers in a David Lynch movie? <laughs> <laughs> this may be less a case of unreliable narrator and more of an instance of reliably variable filmmaker. Number 7. Nick and Amy Elliott Dunn, Gone Girl This married couple appears perfect from the outside. Nick is a successful writing teacher, and The Amazing Amy is the inspiration for a series of popular children's books. However, when Amy goes missing, evidence, including blood and a salacious diary written by Amy herself, points towards Nick. What scared me was that I'd finally realized I am frightened of my own husband. Nick's apathy only increases suspicions, and even the audience is unsure whether or not to trust him. The truth is not so simple. I am so much happier now that I'm dead. Amy is revealed to still be alive, and She's gone to extensive lengths to frame him for her murder as revenge for his infidelity, revealing her to be an absolute psychopath. You need to clean poorly, like he would. Clean and bleed, bleed and clean. Number six, Patrick Bateman, American Psycho. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God, it even has a watermark. Speaking of the deranged, Patrick Bateman is a superficial 80s businessman who takes out his suppressed rage by violently murdering women, the homeless, and a colleague. Hey, Paul! Ah! Insight into Bateman's murderous attitudes comes from his continual narration throughout the film. Yet, near the end of American Psycho, one of his apparent victims is revealed to still be alive. Because I had dinner with Paul Allen twice in London just 10 days ago. And a diary of his is discovered to be full of violent drawings and writing. 
Bateman concludes his narration by stating that his confession has meant nothing. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. How much of his rampage was true, if any, is left to the viewer's imagination. Number 5. Joel Barish, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Joel Barish meets an eccentric woman, Clementine, on a train from Montauk, New York, and they hit it off. Hi. I'm sorry? I just said hi. After two years together, their relationship begins to unravel in a series of dreamlike sequences, which culminates in Clementine having her memories of their relationship erased. And she looks at me like she doesn't even know who I am. Eventually, Joel decides to have the procedure done as well. The first thing we need you to do, Mr. Barish, is to go home and collect everything you own that has some association with Clementine. It's then revealed that their meeting aboard the train takes place after they've lost their memories, and that the dreamlike bulk of the film consists of Joel's memories as they're being erased. Upon learning of their previous relationship in the present, Joel and Clementine decide to try again. Okay. <sighs> Number four, Leonard Memento. I have no short-term memory. I know who I am, I know all about myself. I just, since my injury, I can't make new memories. Afflicted with the inability to form new memories, Leonard Shelby hunts for his wife's killer with the help of Polaroid photos, tattoos on his body, and an ally calling himself Teddy. Lenny! Leonard's pursuit is complicated and tough to follow, especially since it's told out of order. Eventually, Leonard discovers that he had already gotten revenge on the man he'd been chasing a year ago. We found him, you killed him. But you didn't remember. So I helped you start looking again. And that Teddy is using his condition to his own advantage, leading Leonard to manipulate his notes to kill Teddy too. Leonard ends up being unreliable to both the audience and himself. I have to believe in a world outside my own mind. I have to believe that my actions still have meaning, even if I can't remember them. Number three, the narrator, Tyler Durden, Fight Club. Tyler isn't here. Tyler went away. Tyler's gone. The nameless protagonist of Fight Club, sometimes called Jack, is a dissatisfied office drone who suffers from a sleep disorder. After meeting the charismatic Tyler Durden, the pair forms the titular Fight Club, which spreads like wildfire, and leads to the formation of a nihilistic terrorist organization. It was just yeah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, some things remain out of place, and the narrator soon finds people mistaking him for Tyler, and for good reason. What did you just call me? Say my name. Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, you f***ing freak. What's going on? As it turns out, Tyler is another personality that overtakes the narrator's mind while he's sleeping. A revelation that throws him and the audience for a loop. Because we're the same person. That's right. Number two, Roger Verbal Kent, The Usual Suspects. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. A con man with cerebral palsy interviewed by federal officers after a bloodbath on a boat. Roger Verbal Kent narrates much of this film, detailing how he and a crew of other criminals were recruited and manipulated by a mysterious mastermind named Kaiser Soze. There is no Kaiser Soze. The feds deduce that Verbal's fellow criminal, Dean Keaton, was actually Soze all along. Keaton was Kaiser Soze. No. However, it's only after Verbal leaves that they realize he lied and took several places and names from words he found in the room calling his whole narrative into question. You know, back when I was in that barbershop quartet, Skokie, Illinois. Where's your head, Agent Kuyan? A fax then comes through, showing a sketch provided by the only survivor of the boat massacre, revealing verbal to be Kaiser Soze. And like that, he's gone. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You know what you have to do, Nash. They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops. And that's true. Number one, the woodcutter, the bandit, samurai's wife, and the samurai, Rashomon. Under the ruined Rashomon gate, 
a woodcutter and priest recount a trial that occurred to determine who was responsible for killing a samurai. A bandit, the samurai's wife, and the samurai's spirit are all called as witnesses. However, their stories are all contradictory, and each casts their own deeds more positively than the others involved in the incident. <laughs> the woodcutter cuts in and explains that none contained the whole truth, and even his account is not entirely accurate. Rashomon is a tremendously influential film, to the point where the psychological equivalent of the unreliable narrator concept in real life is named the Rashomon effect. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.